If you don't have a strategist, then you have to work with a fellow marketer. Mm -hmm. But even two heads is better than one. In the 1940s and 50s, a guy that you've heard of named Bill Bernbach, mm -hmm. he started a revolution in creativity that produced the golden age of advertising for us. He did something that had never been done before. And today we look back and say, well, duh. You put an art director and a copywriter together and, make, and form what's now called the creative team. It's like, it seems so obvious now, but back yeah. then it was brand new. <laughs> we need to do the same thing in certain circumstances, not always, but in certain circumstances, when you don't have the strategist, a trained brief writer at your disposal, get two marketers together. Two heads are better than one. Do you find that you assign a project to a freelancer and the deliverable you get is completely off base? It might not be the freelancer's fault. So often, marketers hand over vague assignments that don't tell the creative consultant the goal of the project, who the audience is, nothing of importance. The problem isn't the freelancer. It's you. No, it's just the brief. In today's episode, I'm sharing an interview with Howard Ibeck, the host of Brief Brothers Podcast and the creator of Creative Brief Workshops, about developing creative briefs that result in better work, saving you time and money. Think about it. No more going back and forth. No more endless edits. You get what you want the first time. I'm Sarah Noel Block, and this is Tiny Marketing. My name is Howard Ibach. I run a company called Creative Brief Workshops. It's an LLC. It's online. CreativeBriefWorkshops.com is where you can find me. I've been an advertising creative for 26 years. So I got into this on the creative side because I was the guy who read the briefs. And I just got sick and tired of reading bad briefs. <laughs> so, so, you know, that was my motive to get the information I needed to know the answer to the question, what is a good brief? And that took a little bit of research, a little bit of, little bit of time, asking a lot of questions, talking with some smart people, people smarter than I am, people who work as strategists. We used to call them account planners. I think they're just called strategists now. So I've read a ton. I've read probably close to a thousand briefs. And then since 2017, I've been on the faculty of the association. It's a big, this is a mouthful. Okay. So it's the Association of National Advertisers, which is, I think is the largest trade group for the client side brands. They have a training group called the Marketing Training and Development Center. I've been on their faculty since 2017. So I'm in my what, sixth year. I've been teaching brief writing since 2004, I think. So what is that? We're about almost 19 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I've, I've got two books out, How to Write an Inspired Creative Brief and How to Write a Single-Minded Proposition. The first book came out in 2009. The second book came out in 2015. I'm on the third edition of How to Write an Inspired Creative Brief. I think I'll probably come out with the second edition of the of the second book eventually. You know, I write a blog every week. I do the podcast. My partner and I call our show The Brief Brothers. Nice. nice, we, talk, nice. we talk about, yeah, we talk about creative briefs. Believe it or not, we've had over a hundred episodes. So we never run out of things to say or to talk about. It's a combination of interviewing smart people in the industry, as well as talking about nuts and bolts issues around the brief. And then occasionally we'll do a review of creative. You know, the brief is, is the most important document in the creative process. It's step number one. You get it wrong there, everything else falls apart. So, you know, it's not the last part of strategy. It's the first part of creative. And that's why I, as a former creative, like, it's like, I quit giving me junk. Give me something I can work with, right? I know exactly what you mean. As someone who also does a lot of execution, I get briefs and, well, I, I work on both sides, strategy and execution. So I'm creating tons of briefs, but I'm also executing on other companies' briefs. And half the time, I don't know what they're asking me to do. This isn't yep. clear. And I have to sort of guess at what direction they want me to go in. And it just, it makes it really hard. I actually got to talk to someone else about creative briefs last week. So this is good timing because I can merge those, <laughs> those conversations a little bit. I'm, I saw in your, in your application that you were talking about how you should never create 
a creative brief on your own. Right. So tell me more about that. It depends upon where you're sitting. Most ad agencies have strategists. And these are people like my partner, Henry Gomez, who's my my podcast buddy, co-host. He's a trained strategist. So his job is to write briefs. Mm-hmm. Now, he, but he doesn't do it alone in the sense that, that I'm talking about. He always is in conversation with somebody. He's always showing and talking to his creative director. He'll never spring a brief on the creative team unawares. He always is showing dra- early drafts of his brief and getting feedback from the creatives. He's in conversation with, with consumers. He's in conversation with other experts in the field. He's reading. He's doing research. But when, when I do my trainings for the workshops that I do for the ANA and on my own, I'm almost always, but not exclusively, I'm almost always training marketers, mm-hmm. companies that don't have a full-time strategist. So when marketers are writing creative briefs, it's just one of a bazillion things that they do. Whereas like Henry, almost everything he does is something attached to the brief. So if yeah. you're a marketer and you're not trained in writing a brief, and you try to do this on your own, it's an exercise in masochism. Because what ends up happening is the marketer will write a brief and he or she will show her brief to what? The boss, maybe a couple of colleagues. And we all understand that the brief's audience is the creative department. But when you're showing the brief to your boss and your boss is not involved in the project directly, all of a sudden the audience changes. It's no longer the creative department, it's the boss. Yeah. You're writing your brief for your boss. Or maybe maybe a high, a colleague, another marketer who's a little bit more senior to you. And the target audience, the creative department gets lost in that shuffle. So I call that an exercise in masochism. I ask the question all the time in my training. I said, do you write your creative brief by yourself? I said, oh, yeah. Do you collaborate? Oh, yeah, I collaborate. Well, tell me about your collaboration. And they describe what I've just for you. <laughs> so you suggest that the creatives should be involved in the yes. creation of the brief. Yes. I say there should be a, a team, about two people, maybe three tops. It the could be a fellow. The creatives could, and who well, else? If you, don't, if you don't have a strategist, then you have to work with a fellow marketer. Mm-hmm. But even two heads is better than one. In the 1940s and 50s, a guy that you've heard of named Bill Bernbach. Mm-hmm. He started a revolution in creativity that produced the golden age of advertising for us. He did something that had never been done before. And today we look back and say, well, duh. He put an art director and a copywriter together and and formed what's now called the creative team. It's like, it seems so obvious now, but back then it was brand new. (laughs) We need to do the same thing in certain circumstances, not always, but in certain circumstances, when you don't have the strategist, a trained brief writer at your disposal, Get two marketers together. Two heads are better than one. You'll still be able to feed, get, bounce ideas off of each other, just like an art director and a copywriter do, and then loop in a creative, probably your creative director. I'm not talking about a junior copywriter. I'm talking about a senior creative. Who some can of strategic some, mindset. Yeah, exactly. Because not all, but many creatives are strategic in their thinking. But since you're writing that document for the creatives, it makes sense. We have skin in the game. Get them involved. They'll help you fashion language. They'll cut through the crap. I like to say when I was in the advertising business, and I've been retired as a creative for about a dozen years, teaching exclusively now, my art director partner, when I was partnered with a creative person, my art director partner was my BS detector. I would never show an idea to anyone unless my art director gave it at least a thumbs up. If it was like, well, yeah, okay, well, there was hope for it, right? (laughs) I would never show the idea to the creative director or to the client until my partner and I were in sync. And that's what that should be the same with a creative brief. Get more minds because if you write the document by yourself, you're going to have tunnel vision. You're just not going to see what you can't see. All right. I have questions for you. A lot of the people who listen to this show and watch it, they are solo entrepreneurs or Mm -hmm. they are freelancers or one person marketing departments. When you are pretty isolated in your role, how do you bring other people in to help you with this brief? There are freelance strategists out there. Bring in you know, a on, freelance content yeah, strategist. Bring in, a, bring in a strategist, not a content strategist, an account planner, a strategist. Okay. Someone who, who writes briefs, right? So, for example, 
Henry and I invited George Tannenbaum, who is a brilliant copywriter, worked for Ogilvy for many years, and was a victim of the downsizing. When he got to be about 50, they fired him, which is stupid and, and myopic because just as he is, you know, when he's reaching the prime of his life as a thinker and a, st and a strategic thinker, they let him go. Well, now he's making wads of money, more than he ever made as a freelancer. But when we had him on our show, he said, you know, I get a project, I'll call up my favorite strategist and we'll go in and talk to the client together. And my strategist will help me write a brief. We've talked to Cameron Day, who has written a couple of books on how to manage your creative career. He has worked on uh, many, many projects. That's my executive assistant's <laughs> tale. Her name is I'm using this video footage. Yeah. When I start talking about creative brief show, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Looks go. like a raccoon tail. I, I know. Well, she's a beautiful calico. Here, let me show you. There's, <laughs> isn't she beautiful? Yes, she is. Yeah. So Cameron Day is, you know, the son of Shyatt Day founder, Jay Shyatt and Guy Day. He is his son and he had a brilliant creative career. So when he does a new project, because he's out freelancing, he also will call up a strategist. So you're not alone. You, you have access to these resources do that. Don't be isolated. That's a good idea. So these people who are working in these silos normally because they have a solo business or they're a one-person marketing department, they can hire a freelance strategist who knows what they're doing and can support that piece of the pie. And you will look like a more buttoned up creative freelance entrepreneur if you say, I'd like you to meet my strategist you yeah know, this is someone who's here to help me and, and, you know you're gonna have to spend some money to bring a strategist in but it'll be well worth the expense it'll increase the gravitas that you carry when you talk with your clients your clients will appreciate it mm -hmm. you'll be taken more seriously it's a value add mm -hmm. and you can always just make that mark up your own pricing to absorb right. it <laughs> right and you are going to be a better creative as a result because you're going to have a strategic mind working with you yeah, that makes complete sense. Tell me a little bit about your workshops. Mm. You built your very, whole career on your workshops, and I'm intrigued by that. Well, they are interactive. I could sit there and lecture you all day long, and you're not going to learn how to write a brief. This is a, a Socratic exercise, and that can be challenging for some people because when you ask a question, sometimes I'm going to turn the question right back at you. And you say, well, why is it this way? So, well, why do you think? So we often look at examples of creative briefs. I don't show blank templates. A blank template isn't going to help anybody. Mm -hmm. As I like to say, you know, there's nothing wrong with your template. What's wrong is the answers to the questions. <laughs> We're looking for the better answers, right? So we look at examples of actual finished creative briefs that have been done by probably agency strategists. But I, I also include a few student briefs because they're that good. Just to, just to show you, what, what does a brief look like? Because that's the question that most people don't have an answer to. What is a good brief? So when I show this brief, it's usually a, a single page, 100 to 150 words. And there's often stuff that's not in the brief that people expect to see. And so when they say, well, where's this? And I'll say, yeah, exactly. Why is it not there? And they fumble. It's like, well, do they make a mistake? No, they didn't make a mistake. It's not there on purpose. Why is it not there? And so we have this discussion, you know, these are the elements of a really good brief and you may not expect to see something so concise because I've done so many trainings where I hear people say, yeah, our brief's about five, six pages, 15 pages. Well, I, as a creative, I'm looking for one thing. I'm looking for the single-minded proposition or the one key thought or the unique selling proposition or whatever you call it. It's got a hundred different names. Yeah, it's, it's, all usually, it's, now. <laughs> it's usually that guiding to the one thing that the what's in it for me question. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for. And if you've got a 15 page brief, I'm going to be hunting for it for a while. So I show examples of actual briefs by real agencies for real products. And we talk about these things and it often is can be disquieting for some marketers who aren't accustomed to seeing such brevity, such clarity. So that's one of the things that we do is we just let's dive in, let's look at the brief and we'll, and We'll examine it. I also do reverse engineering exercises. You have some smarts. Let's look at an advertising campaign. 
It could be a print ad or series of print ads. It could be a TV spot. Those are the easiest because we're all accustomed to seeing those things. So, okay, let's figure out what the single-minded proposition is. Can you do that? Who is this audience? Is it you or is it somebody else? What's the problem that they're trying to solve? What do you, Can you figure out the objective? Here's a really hard question. Is it possible to deduce what the insight was? That's hard. But if you can reverse engineer, this is an exercise that everybody should do every day, just as a thought exercise. It trains you to think like a brief writer. And then yeah. I have other I have other fun exercises we do just to get you into the, into the thinking process. Mm-hmm. So it's very interactive. I have lots to say clearly, but we do single, you know, individual exercises and small group exercises. So you come away with an understanding of what a good brief looks like, what goes into a brief, and you get your hands dirty. You play around and you, you're working in small groups and you, and you write a kind of a brief in the reverse section, a reverse engineering exercise. In the longer versions of the workshop, if I have a lot more time, we can do a case study and write the brief together in the, in the training. That's a next level. Mm-hmm. So beside the USP, what other questions do you need answered in your briefs? I would say there are about four or five core questions. And every brief I've ever seen asks a version. And notice I say asks. The best briefs are always asking questions. When I see a brief that simply has title or headings, that sends a red flag up because you want the document to be engaging. When you ask a question, an open-ended question requires you to think. And that's the other thing. It's not a form to fill out. A driver's license application is a form to fill out. You already know the answers, right? A creative brief, you don't know the answers. So a good question is, why the heck are we doing this? Why are we advertising? Another way of saying that might be, what's the problem we're trying to solve? But I ask the question, why are we advertising? What is the objective? Not objectives. There's only one objective. The rule of thumb is one brief for one product, one objective, one audience, one proposition, one insight. If anything, there's a second, it's a new brief. That also is, gets people a little verklempt, right? Getting their head around that idea. It's like, wait a minute, we've got three objectives for this for a campaign. Yeah, well, no one's going to pay attention to something that has three objectives. It's like one the objective. rule of having a single CTA on a landing page. You're exactly. giving them too many options if you go beyond that. Or if you people say, well, I've got like four or five segments that I need to talk to. Oh, you can't do that. You can't. Mm. And I, had, I worked with a company that was making military hardware. And the creative director came up to me before. He said, we've got this little problem. Um, this is before the training started. He said, it's like, this is a little problem. We won't need to talk about this today, but I want your advice. He said, and we've got a product. It's an amazing product. It was a fighter jet, right? And the client wants us to have an ad that goes to the 22-year-old, 24-year-old fighter jockey, the guy that flies the plane, and the 55-year-old general that solicits Congress to get to build the plane. I said, you need two different ads. You yeah. can't talk to the same, you can't have the same message to those two groups because they're entirely different. One is, is financially motivated because he's trying to get Congress to, to foot the bill. The other is like, I just want to fly this thing. Right? You can't yeah. have the same message. The creative director knew that. He said, this is the conundrum that I face. I'm trying to get the client to understand. We have the same message to the two different groups. It's not going to work. But I hear that a lot. They have a, this huge audience. I said, no, you talk to one person. Talk to one person, and then you can talk to a larger group. So keep things singular. Keep it focused. And those four or five questions pretty much cover the tech, the, the, the territory of a brief. And... What makes the difference between an I, <laughs> it's okay brief, and uh, this blew me away brief? That's a great question. You ask creatives how many times they've actually seen a blew me away brief. They'll say, never. You know, whether, they'll say once or twice. 26 years I was in the business. I can remember one brief that, that I can still quote today. The question <laughs> isn't how. Well, it was, I was working for Team One Advertising out in El Segundo on Lexus. Lexus was their, you know, their big client. And this was a, a product relaunch. So the brief was just awesome. And they put together a pretty good campaign. Most of the time, the briefs are forgettable. And that's kind of the nature of the beast. And, you know, Henry, my podcast co-host, likes to say, my goal is to write an inspiring brief. If I can't write an inspiring brief, my objective is to write at least a clear brief. Mm-hmm. Creative's going to work with a clear brief. So 
I have reached work with tons and tons, hundreds and hundreds of really bad briefs, and I struggle with the brief writer to get to that core idea. Finding one that really is outstanding is rare, and that's just the nature. We have to admit, we go into this process, your objective isn't to win an Oscar for your brief. Your objective <laughs> is to give the creatives just enough so that they can go off and do what they do. Our goal is a great brief. Our goal is inspiration. There are lots of examples of how you can do it, and that's what I show in my workshops. But if you can't get to that inspiration, be clear. And that's why collaborating is going to help you. Yeah, that makes sense. Even when I'm working on a content strategy, for example, I refuse to do it in a silo. There are so many people involved in it. And I even collaborate with other strategists because, yeah, exactly how you said it, that more heads are better than Mm -hmm. one and you need second opinions. You need to bounce ideas off of people. Absolutely. And, you know, the thing is when you share and you and you collaborate, there's no one person who's going to take the blame for a bad brief. And when you do really well, it's a team effort anyway. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a team effort. You know, no copy. Even if the copywriter came up with a brilliant headline. It was in the conversation with his or her art director that brought it about. So no one person can or should say, it's my idea. It's our idea. It's a yeah. team thing. It's a team thing. Yeah, that makes sense. So do you have anything that you want to share with the audience before we wrap up? I have an announcement that I'm going to be making later in the, later in the year about something that's going to be part of my website. I can't tell you exactly what it is. But it is sorely needed in our industry. It doesn't exist anywhere on the planet that I know of. And I'm going to be offering it free to anyone who wants it. Mm. So, uh, you know, that's a little tease. A little tease. It's something that people didn't didn't know they wanted. But once it's there, you'll realize, wow, this will be a great resource. Okay. Sorry, I can't say more, but you'll just have to So teasing. I know, (laughs) I know. All right. So remember, go over to creativebriefworkshops.com and you can also find Howard on LinkedIn. Um, mm-hmm. It looks like that's your preferred. Yeah. Yeah. And we're now, our podcast is now up on Podbean, which means it will be distributed to, how do you say it? All your favorite podcasts. Yes, all apps. your favorite podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> this is called The Brief Brothers. We're up now. I've still got a few more episodes to upload, but we're almost, we have over a hundred. So we're It's taken me a while, but we're here. We're there. That'll take a minute. (laughs) Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks for joining me on the show. My pleasure, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining me today. I've got three tiny tasks for you. One, bring in other team members into your brief process. If you are a team of one, bring on a strategist to ensure your project is fully formed and effective. Two, Rate and review the pod wherever you're listening to it so more people discover Tiny Marketing. And three, head to the show notes page because I'm offering a unique little gifty for you. I'm giving away free 60-minute strategy calls in exchange for sharing your call on the podcast. All personal information will be beeped out, so don't worry about that. But you can help other people in the world. If you're having a marketing challenge, it is very likely that someone else listening has had the same challenge. We can help everyone involved. Look for the application link in the show notes page. I'll see you next time, friends. Mwah!